Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Scott Wurzbacher. And today, we're going to talk about how one walk can change your life. Our guest is Sean Richardson, the founder of One Walk, a guide company specializing in helping first-time long-distance hikers to gain confidence, competence, and independence so they can eventually feel equipped to plan their own hikes. One Walk leads long-distance hikes throughout well-known paths in Europe, such as the Camino de Santiago, the Cotswold Way, and the West Highland Way. Sean grew up in Montana, and she currently resides in the San Diego area, although she'll soon be coming my way to make a new home in Asheville, North Carolina. She's lived all across the U.S. and in the United Kingdom, where she attended Oxford, and that's where she obtained one of her degrees. She's also climbed and hiked all over the world. Sean is transforming people's lives by introducing them to long distance hiking. And she's here today to share her story of how One Walk came to be. Sean, welcome to the campfire. Thanks, Scott. Great to be with you. Oh, I am so excited. We've had some great conversations leading up to today. And yeah. I've just been really, really excited to, to share your story because it's a great one. And I wonder if we could just start by talking a little bit more about what you do. Well, I do, um, I've started a business a couple of years ago, One Walk, which you referred mm -hmm. to in the intro. Thank you for that. Yeah. And I guide people all over the world, actually. We have a portfolio of hikes that right now we're focusing on Europe, um, a portfolio of hikes that are suitable to first time distance hikers. and. I've been doing this for 10 years, um, well, heavily doing it for 10 years, um, longer, truthfully, but but with great focus for the last 10 years, mountain climbing and hiking. Yeah. And there is uh, there are so many reasons to uh, get out on the trail. I have experienced them all. It has changed my life. And I felt a call to help others have the same experience. And so one walk does that. We take first time hikers. They're typically in their fifties and sixties, typically empty nesters because they have the time mm -hmm. um, to do it. It does take time. It's more than a weekend endeavor. Usually it can be up to a, a week to two weeks, typically sometimes yeah. longer. So we take them out on the trail and our goal is not to create a dependent client. Our goal is to create an independent client. Yes. And these are people who have this yearning to spend some time in nature, to go hiking, but they have a hesitancy about it. Like they think um, maybe they question their fitness. Can they do it? Um, they don't have a friend to do it with. Can I do it alone? I'm scared to do it alone. How do you even do it? I don't even know how to plan one of these trips. What is it like? Do you stay in tents? Do you stay in hotels? You know, the whole, it's just a big mystery for them. And that, that keep, they have the desire, but dot, dot, dot. So we try to just strike the butt from their thinking by, uh, you know, um, familiarizing them with the entire experience on our trails that we have hiked ourselves that we find very suitable for first time. Um, hikers. So that is one element of one walk. That is where my focus is right now. Um, I also do a lot of coaching, life mm -hmm. coaching. Okay. So when you walk, well, let me back up and say one walk is, I think the only guiding company that I know of, and I've worked with lots of them that focuses uh, on the physical experience which is a fantastic part of, yep. you know, outdoor adventure, right? But we also acknowledge the inner experience or yep. the spiritual experience that yes. is had. That word spiritual can bring up a lot of discomfort for people. Mm -hmm. It is not a religious experience. There's nothing. We have no agenda. It, it, all that happens is 
just material comes up for people when they're hiking in nature often and they don't know what to do with that or they do they do know what to do with it but they are hesitant to share about it or talk about it. so we recognize all of that and we have tools to help people work with material that comes up um for me that is the best part of a distance hike of course i love the physical journey but i always love the inner journey and i never can predict what's going to come up it's the, so it's just, the putting together though isn't it yeah. it's the putting to do the two yeah. together yeah and uh, yeah and they do complement each other yeah. and so we've we recognize the the spiritual experience as well and we meet people where they are um it might be a very gentle experience um it might be a very deep experience so you know again we have no agenda there we just are equipped to acknowledge that it will happen and we can work with you yeah so um so i do some coaching around that because sometimes big stuff comes up and I'm a certified life coach and I've studied spiritual psychology for four years. And I personally have experienced complete transformation, um, in nature over these 10 years of hiking, just, and, um, healing and, and growth and, um, attunement to my purpose beyond what I could have ever imagined. Uh I don't so, think my, I'm taking notes here as we're talking and I don't think I can write fast enough. This is, this is <laughs> the good stuff, Sean. Well, and th so there's another layer of one walk that's coming, which, um, is it's quite, it's, it's not new. It's not a tradition that is new to hiking or spending time in nature. However, we don't, we haven't incorporated it in Western culture. And it's an idea of working with intentions and blessings before you go out on the trail and before you merge your energy with nature. Okay. And so we, One Walk will also be selling these banners that you wear on your pack and symbols of intentions that you can choose um, to bring, you know. So for instance, an intention might be joy. And when I walk with the intention of joy, it will bring forward more joy in me. Yes. And if more joy is coming from me, if I'm putting more joy out into the world, out into the energy of nature, I'm going to receive more joy back into my life. So we have a whole bunch of intentions. And we also finally have um, letters, initials, I call them honor initials, because when I'm out hiking on a, on a distance trail, I can't, particularly on the Camino de Santiago, yeah. so many people are there hiking in honor of somebody. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's a lovely, it's a lovely gesture and they can, they might be living or they might be deceased, but anyway, so we, we also sell all the initials. So that, that piece of one walk is coming. This is turning into a very long answer about what no, I do. It's, it's a lot. There's a whole lot in here for <laughs> us to break down. We're going to get into all of it, but I love how you kind of broke down the three different things that, that mm -hmm. you all do. So what I love about this, and I think we kind of alluded to it when you and I spoke the first time, but you know, the whole thing with Inspire Campfire is, is it's about listening to the voice inside that calls oh. us to adventure. Absolutely. You know, and, it, and it kind of follows Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, right? And mm -hmm. so, you know, we receive the call and, uh, and then sometimes we refuse the call. And yeah. this is what you do. So you started off by talking about how you felt the call. Yeah. And then you talked about um, helping people remove their, their butts right? Their fears yeah. and their doubts. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're doing this, like you're, you're in here helping. Can you, like when you said you felt the call, can you, can you elaborate on that? I am happy to elaborate on it. It's a, a very um, personal and interesting story or experience that I had, which I am uh, actually delighted to share. Yeah. So I was uh, experiencing for the first time in my life, um, some this was a couple of summers ago some symptoms uh that turned out to be ptsd mm -hmm. and i think it was it was definitely cumulative um over just a long difficult divorce and and several things that had been going on i guess over a decade of my life and it, i guess it all just manifested in this summer and my body was ready to release it i i can't tell you how it 
why suddenly you start feeling symptoms, but I was. And, um, and so I went to receive some help, seek some help for this. And I went to a psychologist, psychiatrist actually. And that's where I was diagnosed. And the standard of care is talk therapy and sometimes far, um, pharmaceuticals. Right. Right. So I wasn't, I didn't do pharmaceuticals, the doctor. Um, and I didn't think that was the course for me, but I did do talk therapy and it wasn't helping the symptoms of PTSD and PTSD is really brutal. It is a biological hijacking mm. of the body and you yeah. can't control it with your intellect. You yeah. intellectually, you know, that you're in a trap there, but you can't talk yourself out of it. Your body just runs away with the fear and the, the bio, the biological response to the trigger. Yeah. So anyway, I was desperate to, um, clear this. So long story short, I, um, at the same time had been introduced some, to some documentaries on some studies going on, clinical trials going on with, um, psychedelics and PTSD. Yep fascinating. The data was powerful. So here I am having these symptoms. My, my treatment that I was seeking wasn't working. And here was this, these studies that were showing me something very intriguing. So I try, I applied to the studies. I didn't get into the studies. I didn't have the right kind of trauma. I ended up pursuing it privately. So this is not legal in the United States. You have to do it outside of the United States. Okay. And I did it not recreationally at all. Uh, I did it actually, uh, it was very therapeutic and it was um, designed in line with the protocols of these trials that I'm referring to. Yep. But uh, it's actually very serious stuff. And I was terrified because I've never done a drug in my entire, mm -hmm. entire life. So I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if I was going to be hallucinating. I didn't know. So mm -hmm. um, it turned out to be an incredible um, experience, incredibly positive, beautiful, effective at treating my PTSD. Okay. I will not talk about all of that. That maybe is the no, it's, it's other, fascinating. I, yeah. episode, but in, so I did, um, four sessions, they call the four journeys, which is in line with the trial. And again, it did clear my PTSD in the second session. They're, they were, for, in my case, about four or five months apart. Um, I was um, working on some material. You set an intention and I was working on some material um, that uh, stems from, I guess, family history. And at the end of the journey, which can last around three to four hours, I got the only way to describe it is I got a very clear, loving invitation from the universe to start a business. And it was there. So it went something like this. Uh, I know this sounds crazy you all, but this really, this really, uh, this really, really was my experience. So when something like this, the universe said, well, we have a business plan right here for you. Now who the we is that, you know, you all, any, that's up. Anyone can answer that. Is that yeah. God? Is that the universe, our creator, all of it? Yeah. You know, for me, it's the universe and God. So we have this business plan here for you. I'm like, you what? A business plan? How does that work? Yes, there's a business plan that is waiting right here for you. Well, how do I? So I'm going to just go through the dialogue that sort of yeah, went please. on. So I said, well, well, how do I see that? How do I receive that business plan? Well, it's just right here for you. You just, you just take it. You adopt it. And I said, well, okay. And what, what I'm interested, what is it? Let's talk about it. So in this conversation about um, this business, they gave me, they, the universe gave me the name of the business. They said, the name mm -hmm. of your business is One Walk. Actually, they first told me the mission. The mission of your business is to heal people and the planet. And I thought, wow, because that's what I've been working on so much in the last yeah. 10 years. And mostly in nature, frankly. Yep. So your business is to heal the people on the planet through walking. And the name of your company is One Walk. And your logo looks like this. Just the, the design of the logo was right there. The colors, everything. The first product you are to sell are these intentions, which isn't, 
is which is going to be a new product, but you understand exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And this energy, you will stir this. So when you walk, little side note, when you walk, you stir so much energy inside of you, both inside energy shifts and you move energy in the terrain where you're walking. So it's inner and outer energy. And you can put all of this intention out into these you know, the, these waves of energy. And if you imagine that stirred in people and wrapping around neighborhoods and communities and the world, this is this healing blanket of energy circulating mm -hmm. the planet. So that was the concept. And so that's my first product I'm supposed to sell. And, um, and then also came the, a list of the first people I was supposed to contact. So anyway, the, the journey ends and I wasn't at all planning on starting a business at this point in my life. And, um, I saw, I thought about it for a couple of days and this business plan that had been divinely written was clearly, as I think it's been written and waiting for me since birth because my whole life has prepared me to run this business and everything I have done literally has prepared me to run this business. So I said, well, I will always wonder what if, if I don't do it and I just don't want to live that way. So I said, yeah, yes. The answer is yes, I'm going to do this. I don't know how. And the universe, you know, said was very clear in that journey. Cause I was asking the how questions and the universe said, don't get hung up in that. It will, you, your mission is to live your life and flow. And if you're living your life and flow, all of the answers are going to come. Yeah. And so my practice, my personal practice is to live in flow. And one of the major tools that I use for living in flow is walking in nature. Hmm. This is, it's, it's so powerful. Um, and for, really for people scary. listening, I really, I want to just make sure that we just kind of go back here because, mm -hmm. you know, this, a lot of this started with some trauma, right? Some tough, yeah. family, some tough family stuff. And yeah. we're going to call it struggle. Yeah. And we all have it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in my case, so, you know, it's very interesting you were, we're hitting on this because I think the first thing that happened to me um, when I started studying spiritual psychology, it was the first evening of lecture. The lecturer, um, my mentor, my teacher, was talking about um, how everything in life happens to you. I mean, for you, not to yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And that when you are living in this, everything's happening to you. Now I'm going through a divorce at that time. And so in my mindset at that time, it was all happening to me. Yeah. It's, it's victim consciousness. And when you are a victim, because everything's happening to you, you just really are not in a very empowered position. You don't have a, you don't feel you have much agency over your life. Yeah. But if you can transfer, transform that, by asking one question. And that question is, how is this happening for me and not to me? You then shift into empowerment. Do you feel like you were in victim conscious consciousness yeah. at that time? My whole life. Yeah. My whole life um, without even knowing it. And, you know, the uh, irony is that I was, um, I've always been an entrepreneur. I have had an entrepreneurial spirit. I've started many things. So I'm, I've ha I have a lot of initiative. I start things. I m love meeting people, but all with the victim consciousness. And um, it, that has been healed. But uh, that was a v very powerful um, shift for me. When, when did that shift from victim consciousness uh, away from that take place that first night. So that was about mm, seven, eight years ago. And it was sudden, you know, lessons don't always have to take a long time to learn. Sometimes they're just instant. You'll yeah. just get, you resonate with the new belief. I, I got it that night when he was saying that I was like an incredible awareness of my own behavior. Um, was present. And I just let go of the old behavior. Yeah. 
And just that one question I ask myself all the time, how is this happening for me? And I don't always know the answer right away, but it comes, it comes, I'll go for a long hike. <laughs> um, it'll often come up in the hike. Why is this happening into my in my life now? What is the opportunity here? Even when it's painful stuff, but it comes. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting because this was <clears throat> this was something that was essentially presented to you as part of a lecture or as a class, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. resonated with you right away. Like so many of us, we hear these things and we're like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like, it's a whole nother thing to like really embody that. So mm -hmm. this is, this is kind of a rare thing where you, you heard something and it immediately made sense and you were able to apply it to your life. Yeah. Indeed. And I would also add one thing, uh, one more thing. And that is when people are out hiking, right, which I assume many of your listeners might be, might do, um, and stuff comes up, there are some tools everyone can use for self-coaching. And one of them is that very question. So when, if you're walking and some situation comes up that's causing some upset for you, mild upset, a relationship, uh, something at work, whatever it might be, it's a really good question. Instead of ruminating on what is happening to you, shift it and say, hmm, how is this happening for me? What is this opportunity in here for me? Yeah. And I that's just that. an easy skill to use. And there are a few other easy skills that one can use. And that's part of the coaching, uh, coaching work I do, but that's a freebie out there for everybody. Yeah. And I, so I want to get into that. I want to get into the trail. One thing. So the, you know, this whole journey that's led up to this point, it, it brought you to this, um, this sort of simulation of the trials. And it's just for listeners. Um, I'm, I believe you told me that this, the trial was, was using MDMA. MDMA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just, just to, so for people's context. Yeah. And so such an interesting thing, because that was a, you know, um, I think you said there was three different sessions. I did four. You, yeah. 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 Various trials will use three or four. I did four. And you were healed on the first one. And so you're yeah. left with the, with the, uh, the final three to yeah. develop where you basically got this download for your business idea. Yeah. And, and so, you don't control it. You, you yeah. know, you don't control what comes up in these. I, I did the entire protocol for the trial um, and lots of things came up during those four it's uh, journeys, including this concept of one walk. Yeah. And what's amazing is, is like, had you not had that struggle that led you to that place, what all happens afterwards never would have taken place. That's right. Yeah, that's so, exactly. So let's right? go to, let's go to one walk, like take us to the trail. Where, where do you go? First of all, just for listeners, um, where are some of the places that you guys walk and can you give us some details about um, the length of the walks and, uh, and then we can get into what happens out there on the trail. Sure. So it's relatively new. So I personally have done, you know, walks of, all links um, all over the place, all over the world. Not so much in the United States, actually, mm -hmm. because yeah. we don't have the, the infrastructure to support um, hikers. I mean, it's you here, it's in a national park, probably, and you're going to have to use a tent and get a permit. Yeah. So, but that is not true in other countries. So, some of the uh, hikes that we do right now that we, if you went to my website, onewalk.world, www.onewalk.world, you would see a tab hiking opportunities. And on that right now, we have a hike in Portugal the first week of April. Um, this is a four day hike. So it's one week in total in and out of Lisbon. And this hike is the most gorgeous coastal hike in the world, I truly believe. I thought I was going to find that gorgeous coastal hike in Ireland, which has nice. beautiful coastal hiking. But it's the it's this trail called the Fisherman's Way in Portugal. So that's one of the hikes we do. Another one we're offering is um, the first week of the Camino de Santiago and Spain, getting people set up and comfortable with how it works. I really hope that um, individuals will come without their friends because this is the ideal. Um, you'll, I think you'll get more out of the trip if you go alone, frankly. Yep. And this is a really great way for anyone that has any hesitancy to get set up. We, we're going to walk with you. We're going to get you set up. We make all the arrangements that first week. And if you want to continue on, to walk more of it um, on your own, you will be completely comfortable and prepared to do that. 
or you can come back another time. A lot of Camino walkers will do the Camino, which is 500 miles in total. We'll yeah. do the Camino in segments, you know, over several years. But we're going to walk the first 100 miles and set people up. And then they can go on and, and do however much more of it they want to. Yeah, so I just want to stop you real quick because that's like there was an, we had another guest um, a few episodes ago, Dave Bradley, who did the entire Camino de Santiago. And so yeah. listening to you, this is so cool. So if anybody was inspired by his story, you're going to get them set up, do that first week, and then yeah. they can finish the rest on yeah. their own. That's, yeah. a great, that's a great concept. That's what we're doing. And I'm doing it with my partner, Andy. And in fact, Andy, uh, Andy's from England. Andy and I met hiking the Camino de Santiago. We have both Very hiked cool. yeah. uh, that entire trail. Again, that entire 500 miles. We've hiked all of the Caminos in Spain, actually. So uh, it's a fantastic hike. It is, uh, a, it's a pilgrimage. You really, you work a lot with intentions on the Camino and you will meet people from all over the world and you really won't come back the same. You won't, you won't return the same person. And, and that's in good ways. So, so we're doing the, that first week, the first hundred miles of the Camino. We are also offering the Cotswold Way in England, which is 102 miles through the Cotswolds um, in England and beautiful, not a mountainous hike, but a, you know, pastoral, beautiful rolling hills kind of hike. I think this is one of the very best first hikes for someone to do that wants to explore distance hiking. Um, it's a wonderful variety of hotels. We have a support car in this particular hike. Um, it's, it's just a lovely place to get acquainted with the whole endeavor of through hiking. We're um, offering that. Um, and then we also are offering that West Highland Way uh, in Scotland. And very few people offer that hike. Uh, it is uh, there are not a lot of rooms and infrastructure to support the West Highland Way, but we have reserved space for a group of eight people all throughout the trails. And we stay only in hotels and we have la luggage transport during the day. So you, we carry on all of our hikes. So we carry only what we need that day. We think people typically, uh, we've discovered that people uh, in our age group are, that's just what they want to do. They want to stay in the hotels. They want their heavy luggage to be transported and they just want to be able to enjoy the beauty of the day that they're going to. Yeah, totally. I mean, you get the, you get the good physical experience during the day, but you also yeah. get, you know, a comfortable bed and a meal yeah. at the end of the day. And a nice the, dinner and a shower day. and just comfort. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the walk itself, the physical walk, I mean, it is, it's an accomplishment. It's an yes. achievement, right? I mean, you're yeah. doing hundreds of miles, yep. you know, the Cotswolds, Fisherman's Way, West Highland. I mean, you know, hundred miles, you do the Camino, you're talking five. I mean, this is an accomplishment, mm -hmm. but you're also mixing in the inner piece. Mm -hmm. And so I just, yeah, I, I guess what I'm, what I really am curious, like, how does nature and walking, how have you seen it like open people up to be better prepared for that inner peace? Hmm. So that's a great question. So first of all, I'm going to address what I think happens. Now, this is just my experience, mm -hmm. my description, my opinion based on all that I have done myself out there, both the physical and the inner. So actually I'm going to refer to the prayer flags in the Himalayas to um, explain this. So the prayer flags, which I, I know you all, every, most everyone has seen, yeah. they are actually uh, blessings. So first of all, the, the flags are colors, they're red, blue, mm -hmm. yellow, they are five colors. And they're always the same, these colors. And they represent elements like fire, water, sky, and nature. And the colors of these flags are absent, are there to represent and enhance the balance that is in nature, the energetic balance. And then on each of these flags is a blessing, an energetic blessing that's offered into all permeable space in the universe. So it's kind of related to my intentions, right? Yeah. So you see that correlation? But the perfect energetic balance that those flags honor in nature 
that was really when I began to open up and understand why it's so powerful if we quiet our bodies and open our minds and our hearts when we're hiking, why the powerful experiences that can be had. It's because like energy draws in like energy. And if you are in this perfect balance of energy, uh, you know, in nature's perfect balance of energy for long periods of time, and you're quiet and you're unplugged from your technology, your energy rises to match that of nature. You too come into a perfect balance of energy or a more perfect balance of energy. And you really can ex connect to your truest authentic self. And you are clear, you are creative. Um, and I just think it's this matching of energy. And if you are, then you're surrounded by all the beauty and it's just peaceful. So I think that it's in that cocktail where the inner journey can be found. Now, I can't, you know, you, you can't design these inner journeys. Clients can only open to them. So a typical, you can set an intention and there are, I can't tell you how many times I've started a day saying, oh, this would be a good day to think about X. I'm going to think about X today. I have eight hours of hiking ahead of me and I'm going to really reflect on this. Well, I'll start out and within two minutes, I'm not thinking about X, Y pops up mm -hmm. and I, you know, and I'm just, I just surrender to Y. And I just allow why to come into my mind and my heart. And I just be with it. I can't tell you what it's going to be. It could be a relationship, an issue, an idea, a creative thing. I mean, it's so fun to discover, you know, what all these issues are that come up. So I only offer, so we will set an intention back to the hiker now. We can't control it or design it. You can set an intention. And then I really love this prayer or, or blessing, if you will. Just You just say it to yourself, you know, um, let come what wants to come. Let go what wants to go. Mm. And just take a deep breath and you just open your heart and you just start walking. You don't have to do any work. Nature will just bring it to you. And it's really a beautiful experience. And sometimes, so then here's where sometimes people might reach out for a little coaching. Like you might have clarity that there is a relationship in your life. Either, you know, a child, a friend, a parent, a spouse or a partner that you want to nourish and enhance and you don't really know how. Or conversely, that it's time to let go of. It's time to let go of it. Tip, more typically, I think people just are wanting or become aware of a relationship that they want to nurture more, but how to do that. And so those are, you know, that's just an example. Of could you, could you give um, a couple of examples of the intention setting? What are, what are some things that, that somebody mm -hmm. might set as an intention at the beginning of their walk or the, or the day even? That's a great question. So for me, with my with with the intentions, I like to keep things very general and very basic. I don't like to get too specific because when I get specific, I'm, I think I'm trying to control an outcome. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there might be something much greater mm -hmm. than what what this outcome that I'm trying to create. Mm -hmm. So so, for instance, let's go back to the joy intention or loving kindness or well-being, you know, there's just, there are so many different ones, but um, I'll take joy. So I would put the joy, I would look at my little, you know, case of intentions. They are little pins that I, that we attach and you don't have, you can have more than one and I'll pick the one that just speaks to me that day. I want to experience more joy in my life. Okay. Well, if I want to experience more joy in my life, I need to be more joy. I need to offer more joy to the world. So I'll take, take my joy pen and I'll put it on my lanyard and I'll say, you know, I offer my joy. I actually like to say it several times when, and I will tend to, uh, throughout the day, if it comes to me when I'm looking at something extraordinarily beautiful, like I'll, 
hit a spot on the trail that is just so scenic. You have to stop and just feel the gratitude that floods you in that moment. And you just offer it again. You know, I offer my joy. Gratitude can also be an intention, hmm. which is, a, I, it's one I actually hike with almost every day, coupled with others. I tend to have more than one going at a time. I have a little menu of intentions, but gratitude, what, if it, what a beautiful energy to offer to the world. And when you offer more gratitude out there, you offer your energy of gratitude into all that energy that's circulating the one world. <laughs> you um you'll get more of it yeah. you'll feel more of it in your own life so I, I wonder if we could ask about kind of the shadow side because these are like very positive emotions and mm -hmm. i think like one thing like you said um that there's this energetic balance and mm -hmm. nature has this very calming just natural energy and when we get into nature like i was almost as you were talking i was almost thinking about like salt or sugar or like um, you know, color drops in a glass of water and how you, how it's like basically like filling, filling the space, right. When you're in that space, like it becomes you like os osmosis, we might call it right mm -hmm. so by being in nature. And so I think the positive intention setting, um, it's very important, but do you ever like experience people that show up needing to let go of some negative energy? And how does that, how does that play into this? The answer is yes, because we're all human, right? Um, and I again, we don't control it. I don't control their experience. So it, I'm going to go back to my journey uh, where this whole one walk idea was yeah. given to me or revealed to me. It was very specific. So I was having this dialogue with the universe about how this will work. <laughs> and the universe repeatedly said to me, we need you to inspire people and help people to get to the trail and we will take over mother nature will take over the experience on the trail. You're not going to be responsible for their experience on the trail. You are just taking care of their logistics and getting them there. We will take care of the experience. So I truly believe that people will have the experience that they need to have. Yeah. I certainly have. When I look back, you probably have too. The stuff that comes up is the stuff that needs to come up and it's not traumatic stuff. I mean, it's just, it's gentle. It's, it's, um, it's just a, a highlight of the area of your life that needs attention. And a lot of times it's really fun stuff that comes up. Usually it's fun stuff. So yes, people have, we all have negative baggage and it will become clear to you. It's just, you just start shedding it. You just start becoming clear when you connect to yourself and your heart in the energy of nature, you, you rise to your own energetic balance. It just all, you just return to balance and it becomes clear. You, you get so much clarity around what your priorities are, who your people are, how you want to be spending your time. And you go home very renewed yeah. in that. Can you talk a little bit about some of the transformation that you've witnessed? So I, it's very, that's a good question. I can certainly talk about a lot of the transformation I have experienced, but here's what happens with clients. So again, it's a very um, gentle experience and mm -hmm. it's very individual and a door, so so we might be hiking the eight days together of the Cotswold Way. And after the hike is over, um, I might ask people, or I do ask people to share with me when they get home. Sometimes they'll have a something they want to share, just an awareness, you know, that some awarenesses that have come during yeah. the hike. But in fact, typically they're just so super stoked that they just hiked a hundred miles because right. this is the first time they've done it. So they're kind of celebrating the physical. Absolutely. Yeah. And it should be, I Absolutely. mean, it's really fantastic. I'm celebrating with them and I'm, and so that's very much, the physical is very much going on too, but in the background um, is this inner journey that it's sort of like seeds that are being planted in people's minds and they begin chewing on the material. Um, and, uh, and then it goes on when they get home. And so I know that some of, I know some of the doors that have been opened for people, but I don't know, 
all, you know, where it ultimately goes. But I have seen, so I will tell, share a story with a client that um, I think is a great example. So, um, and if there are other guides out there, you may be able to relate to this. So I had a client that on the sixth out of eight days of hiking was ready to leave the trail wanted to leave the group and pursue her own um, deal. I think, in fact, she was, um, yeah, anyway, the reasons why are not so important to this conversation, but she and I, as guide, what we were like, well, you know, um, okay, this is all about independence. Um, if you feel ready to do that, great. It's a well-marked trail. She had experience. And in fact, she just reached her feelings of independence a couple of days before the end of the trail. Okay. So, and we stayed of course in touch and with her as she continued, um, her walk. So I wondered at the end of that trail, if she had considered it a failed experience for her, if yeah. you will. Mm -hmm. And should I experience, consider it a failed experience for a client? So I called her, um, We'd stayed in contact and sometimes you're not ready to talk about these things right away because you don't really have the clarity, right? Mm -hmm. So it was about a month or two later, she called me and um, wanted to talk about it. And I said, I am so glad that you want to talk about it. She said, I want to tell you that my decision to leave that trail changed my life. And I said, well, how does it, how? And she said, I never use my own voice. I never make my own decisions. She's a grown woman with children and runs yeah. a business. Um, I always do what other people tell me I should be doing. And I wanted to lead the trail. First time I've ever spoke, you know, spoken up and done it. And then I lived with the experience and had a great experience. I got home and I run my business entirely differently now. That's awesome. I do. Yeah, I make the product I want to make. Yeah. And so that is an example right? Of tr a transformation. It yeah. was, a, it was to me, oh my God, is this a failed, you know, guide client experience, but it was a complete, um, birth for her. It was. So, so, so you said that you could talk about your own transformations mm -hmm. and I was going to go there next. So I'm glad you already talked about mm -hmm. that. So, um, obviously you've got people that are doing these walks that are having just incredible experiences, mm -hmm. but as the leader, as the guide, like how has one walk changed your life? Hmm. So from the guiding, so I walk my own walks, right. And that is where I stay in flow. It's just, I am happiest out on a trail. Oh my God. And I love exploring, uh, meeting people all the time in the inner journey and the physical journey. It's where I find flow. It becomes more of a group. Uh, I am, I become more of a space holder for my clients. It's not about my experience at this point. I'm very much holding space for my clients and making sure that, you know, the logistics are all going, that everybody's having their walking experience, that they're slowly um, moving up the confidence scale yep. mm -hmm. and familiarity and all of that, that the goals are being reached. So, and then I get, because of, I guess my, coaching skills and training and spiritual psychology studies, I am very well aware of some of the dynamics that are emerging both for the individual and in, and in a group. And I try to let them evolve and play out and let people have the experience. If I interrupt them, if you, then I take the gold away. You know, I'm taking the gift. I'm taking the learning away. It's a, it's similar to parenting. You know, if you, if you <laughs> take the, your child is in a learning moment, but if you go in there and rescue the child, they're not going to learn, you know, the learning moment is gone. So it's a little bit like that when we're hiking. Parenting and, is a learning experience too, though. That's a constant, just, you know, we are always getting better at that one too. Yeah. 
Yes. And I learned lots from my clients. Wow. Because, yeah. you know, I love, I enjoy talking to them. Um, I'll, I encourage a lot of quiet time on the trail, but I also enjoy talking to them and I get incredible insight. I actually feel their energy and learn a lot about who they are just from this energetic exchange on the trail with them. I love it. I want to ask you something. You mentioned um, living in flow that, and that's something that, uh, you know, I love that concept as well. Yeah. Um, what is it? Before we wrap up here, can you talk about what it feels like to you? Yeah. So that's such a great uh, question because there are lots of definitions. There are books written, you know, business books about it's like being in, living in your zone of genius mm -hmm. or, you know, your skill set. And actually for me, the universe instructed uh, me or shared with me that living in flow is living your life in the loving energy that's circulating around this universe in the oneness. And so living in flow, staying connected to my own loving energy, to the loving energy in others, to the loving energy around me, in nature, in my neighborhood, in everything that I'm doing. And it's not all, you know, I fall out of flow and then, but I do have the skills to get back into it. And so living in flow is um, living in loving energy. So I love this. I want to ask you, um, I usually wrap up the podcast asking for advice for those that have felt the call to adventure, but might be experiencing some resistance. But I want to add to that how we can get into flow and stay in flow as part of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, first I wouldn't recommend walking, even in your neighborhood, just go do it, put on your tennis shoes and start with walking in your neighborhood. That will lead to the next, to the next, to the next. And everybody's journey is different. So mm -hmm. start moving energy inside of you. Just start the shift and think about the things you're grateful for. The, great, the easiest way to get move back into flow is think about the gratitude that you have. And that puts you pretty much in loving energy right there. And the other thing you can do when you're really working on something in your head. So I, I, the question I used to ask myself all the time is what is the right thing to do? And now I ask myself, what would love do? Mm. And sometimes, and often when I'm answering that question, what would love do, I start with, so let's say I'm, I'm thinking about a difficult situation or something that I'm struggling with. Um, what would love do? First, what would I do to love myself in this situation, even though it might not be about me? Maybe it's a, a concern I have for somebody else or something. So first I think about myself, you know, it's not... Um, what would love do isn't a, necessarily a sacrificial answer, you know, I, I guess is where I'm trying to go with all of that. Yeah. So what would I do with myself and what, it, what would be loving to do? What would love do? And sometimes it can be quite a firm boundary. So it just, you know, it depends on what the issue is and, and the answer is different for everyone. But if you are walking and all that energy is moving and you are thinking about the things you're grateful for, it's pretty easy to answer or begin to answer that question of what would love to if you're in that energy space. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Sean, I mean, you've lived an extraordinary life and the, the journey continues and you've got all of these walks ahead, but you know, at some point, Hollywood's going to pick up on your story. <laughs> They're going to make a movie about you. <laughs> what I want to know is when they do, who's going to be the Hollywood actress that's going to play you in this movie? Well, I was thinking about that question because you did uh, share that you might ask that at the end of the uh, at the of our uh, talk today. But um, so, two a person comes to mind for two reasons, and the answer is Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, I love Reese. Okay, uh, and she comes to mind because one, I'm often told that when people see me walking down the street, they'll do a double take and they'll say, "You look like Reese Witherspoon." Have you nice. ever heard you look yeah. like Reese? So I hear that sometimes. Um, secondly, she you know, starred in the wonderful movie yeah. Wild, right? Yes. And now she's older than when she made, like in my, she, we're about the same age, I believe. So I, I think that that would be um, a great. Uh, That's a great choice. I love it. So what's the movie going to be called? I think the movie is called The Light Sprinkler. 
L I G H T, the, the light. light sprinkler. Yeah, that's related to one of my journeys. At the end of my last journey, the universe said to me, You are a light sprinkler. So go sprinkle your light. Wow, that's we got we're just gonna end right on there. That's a mic drop. The light sprinkler starring Reese Witherspoon. That's a movie everybody's gonna want to see. All right. Uh, if people want to go on a walk with you or if they want to get in touch with you for coaching or any other reason, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the best way is to go to the website because all the information is there, the hikes, how to get into contact with me for coaching. And that uh, website is www.onewalk.world. Awesome. Sean, yeah. thank you so much. This has been such an inspiring conversation. I really appreciate your time. For those listening, I hope you have been inspired today as much as I have. I hope that Sean's story has encouraged you to listen to the voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell or you need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. We'd also appreciate it if you'd help us spread the word by leaving a review and sharing or tagging Inspire Campfire in your social media. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside. Thanks for listening. Sean, thank you so much for being here today. Enjoyed it so much. Best to you and everyone listening.